that when you print money uh, and borrow money, subconsciously we know this leads to problems. The largest debtor nation in the history of the world and printing money faster than any country in the history of the world. This has to end badly. Well, it always has, Rick, when you've had huge money printing throughout the history of the world. When there's too much of something, the value goes down. There's too much money now, so eventually the value of the money will go down. That's also called inflation. And inflation, when prices go higher and higher, it's starting to happen. Some of us remember, have yeah. lived through inflation in the past. We've certainly read about it. Uh, and when prices go higher and higher, it usually causes distortions in your economy, in your life, your children, your savings, everything. It gets messed up. But when you have so much money printing, as we've had recently, it has always led to higher inflation. Maybe it won't this time. In Washington, they say, don't worry. We have things under control. If you mm -hmm. believe them, you won't worry. And you, you won't worry about inflation or protecting yourself. I continue to protect myself from inflation. Uh, the United States market has been going up for 12 years now uh, without a serious problem. That's the longest in American history. Maybe it's going to go on 112 years without a problem. Mrs. Yellen says it will. I would suspect we're getting closer. I'm starting to see signs of bubbles developing and bonds, some stocks. Uh, I, I'm not selling out yet by any stretch because the bubble's not everywhere, but it is forming. And I would suspect within a year or two, we're going to see serious problems. We're starting to see uh, inflation. Now, I'm sure that will slow down for a little while because that nothing goes straight up. Well, we always look for uh, easy solutions when things get bad. Uh, again, read history, it always happens. People look for something that will make life easier uh, and they try it. They try it, if, they, if, there's a, if there's a theory lying around, they say, oh, let's try that. Let's try that for a while. That's what more money today will be, MMT. They will try that. But in the end, you cannot, everybody cannot just print money, or let's put it this way, never in history has that worked in the long term. It may work in the short term, but it, if it works, eventually all currencies are debased and people have to look for something stable. Never in world history has there been a country as deeply in debt as the United States. Now, I hate saying that. I'm an American citizen, taxpayer like you, and my children. Oh, my gosh, it's a good time to be old in America because we get the benefits and we don't have to pay for it. But my children are going to inherit huge problems, just like the British did and many other countries in history. Rick, let me say again, the largest debtor nation in the history of the world and printing money faster than any country in the history of the world. This has to end badly. If or when interest rates go higher, many people are gonna go, I mean, Connecticut is bankrupt, Illinois is bankrupt. Many places are, are actually bankrupt now. And when interest rates go higher, it's gonna put them out of business. I don't like saying any of this, Daryl. I'm an American like you, but I have to face facts. And the US government, when interest rates go higher, its interest rate is gonna absolutely go through the roof and it's going to affect all of us whether we're homeowners or whatever whatever we are car we buy a car anything it's going to have an effect on us rick when you print a lot of money it's got to go somewhere it takes a long time to build a factory it takes a long time to build a bridge but you can go online and in eight seconds you can buy a lot of microsoft or anything you want to and that's what's happening Stocks and bonds all over the world are going through the roof because all this money has to go somewhere. But I remind you, somebody's got to pay for it someday. We have all the major central banks in the world flooding the world with money. Of course, it's going to continue. I don't see anything that's going to stop them right now. In America, even Congress has said, we'll spend as much money as, as, as you want to. So you have government spending money, you have central banks printing money. I mean, this is not good for the world, and it's certainly not sound fundamental reasons for stock markets to go up, but it's, it's a good party while it lasts. I'm just telling you facts of what's going on, whether we like it or not. We have to deal with facts. 
Unfortunately, in Washington, they don't think they have to deal with facts. They think they can just do what they want. This is not good for the world. Debt is increasing everywhere. Uh, one of these central banks somewhere along the way is going to start cutting back. Perhaps the American Central Bank will continue to cut back. Somewhere along the line, Tara, we're all going to say, oh my gosh, this is, this is serious. They're serious about cutting back. Markets will go down. Markets will go down and have, I don't know, 10, 20, 20 percent, enough to scare everybody. Then the central banks will get scared. Then, they, you know, these guys are just academics and, and bureaucrats. And then they'll start printing money again. And the whole thing gets more and more elevated and more and more artificial. And when it pops, when this artificial sea of liquidity dries up, Tara, it's not going to be fun. But I don't see any reason that it would stop anytime soon. As I say, even if it stops, they're going to get scared and print more. But eventually, what happened in the 70s, interest rates were over 20%. That's not a typo. Volcker took interest rates higher and higher and higher. And of course, it crushed the economy. But when the economy was crushed, the price of everything, oil, copper, everything, the prices came down and we didn't have inflation for a while again. <laughs> we know that when you print money, uh, and borrow money, subconsciously we know this leads to problems. And so more and more of us are turning to gold and silver. Throughout history, people like me have always turned to gold and silver in times like this. I mean, you weren't asking about gold yet, but look, David, the, the politicians and the academics and the bureaucrats tell you, Gold is not worth it. Do not. Gold is a barbarous relic. That's what they call it. Maybe. But peasants like me, peasants like me throughout history, know that gold and silver, okay, it may be a barbarous relic, but I'm going to own it. Because you will see that the world is really doing strange, unusual things. Never before in the history of the world have interest rates been negative. Never and before has a major bank like the Bank of Japan said, we will print unlimited amounts of money. Sure, Zimbabwe prints unlimited amounts of money. Countries have done it. But now you have major people doing it. So, yeah, this could turn into a huge bubble. The way it has always worked is it starts slow. And people, some people start to notice it, but others don't. Or they think it's temporary. And the government always says, don't worry, it's temporary. We have things under They want to keep their jobs. They don't care about my children. They don't care about you and me. They're trying to keep their jobs. And yeah, everything is great right now. Look out the window. Yeah. Things are booming. But but there has to be a tomorrow. And I'm worried about the tomorrow. It's great. Uh, the United States market has been going up for 12 years now uh, without a serious problem. Eventually, all currencies are debased and people have to look for something stable. That when you print money uh, and borrow money, subconsciously we know this leads to problems.